Hey, what's going on guys? Kamenkians here. I've just implemented the very first Tetris game in my life and I'm absolutely happy about this because this is one of my favorite games. Uh, so I decided actually to make a small tutorial series on how to code Tetris absolutely from scratch in JavaScript. So even for those who might not be that good familiar with programming in general, uh, following this series should be really easy and simple and it's about to be covering uh, some very essential things uh, in regards to game programming in general, like collision detection, things like that. So, in this video, I just want to demonstrate how the end result of what we're supposed to be developing in this series is going to look like. Then, uh, I'll demonstrate how I played because I really love playing this game. And then, maybe a few words on uh, how it's rendered. And then, maybe we'll quickly walk through the source code. And start from the next video, basically, we'll go for a full-blown tutorial covering every single step needed in order to come up with this sort of a game. So, let's go. Uh, this is the single file, and we'll go to the source code. So, here, oh, sorry. So, I'm using the arrow keys to rotate the pieces. All right. So, I try to make it old-school-like. Right, so here's how it works. And you might be wondering how the graphics is rendered, right? And this is, guys, this is HTML table. Can you believe it? You don't believe me? Let me show you. So if I just inspect the element here, and you see, like, we have this HTML table. And before I lost, okay. <laughs> All right, so just put, put a piece to definitely the wrong place. Um, the reason for considering this HTML table is, well, first of all, I really like uh, like prehistoric browsers, backward compatibility. Uh, secondly, I love HTML table to work with, from my chess programming backgrounds mostly. I do know how to work with uh, HTML canvas, and I have a series on programming uh, Wolfenstein, Wolfenstein 3D-like game, uh, recast an engine in pure JavaScript using the canvas element. But here, uh, just for simplicity, uh, I wanted to make the output as simple as possible, so eventually I decided to, to be sticking to the pure HTML table without, without any, any kind of complications. So, yeah, that's, that's how we go. So let me just delete a few more lines, because uh, it's so addicting. When I start playing Tetris, I forget about everything, literally, so <laughs> I'm sorry for this. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I need to make a video, but <laughs> when I start playing Tetris, I just I can't hold myself from <laughs> kicking a few more blocks, if possible. So yeah, uh, I'm still testing this uh, just to make sure that no horrible uh, surprising bugs are about to be occurring during the series itself. So hopefully, so hopefully it's stable, right? I really, I really hope so. Um, <coughs> sorry, uh, still can't recover. However, okay. So I hope, you, I hope you got the idea. So we don't yet have scores uh, spitting up the pieces when you were getting a certain amount of uh, of points, things like that. Those uh, nitty gritty bells and whistles are about to be added later on during the series itself. And at the moment, I just wanted to make sure that. The game logic itself, uh, sort of a game en game engine, if you want, uh, is kind of stable enough and works. Yeah. So, all right, <laughs> this is gonna last forever. So I can't stop the game because it doesn't have pause or something. So it would just go until until it dies, basically. Okay. So uh, we're going for an array-based board representation. And by the way, something interesting to consider. So here. Uh, it's incredibly uh, helpful for debugging purposes. I have a function called print board, and the internal board representation is here. So we have this hash symbols to represent uh, the Tetris board. It's not sure if it's okay to call it board or not. And the Tetris pieces, also known as tetrominoes, are represented by this at symbol. So what, whatever pattern we have here, right? Exactly the same pattern we have right over in here. So again, uh, it's incredibly, incredibly, incredibly useful during uh, the, the debugging process. So uh, I've been using this print board function a lot. 
Then the determiners themselves are strings, basically. So we then have a function to map this this kind of determiner to to the board array, and that one is called set determiner. Also to detect the collisions, uh, we're using this function fit determiner just to make sure if it kind of doesn't hit anything. If it doesn't, then great, we just can go on. What else? Um, an interesting technique that I've taken from uh, one lone coder's uh, YouTube channel, uh, the way how to rotate the determiner uh, using this fence indexing stuff. So it's quite quite fascinating one. I really love how it works. So this allows us just simply to, to have uh, like one pattern per determiner and using this specific indexing, we can just rotate this to whatever angle we want. Well, not whatever angle, but to up to four uh, for shapes basically, so call it shape here. Um, what else? So here, uh, so the render uh, is the function that prints the board and those pieces that are already being settled down. Now, uh, by the time when we're moving the piece around the board, it's not yet the part of uh, the board array, so it's just the collision detection is done on the fly. And only when it drops down, when it settles down, it becomes the part of uh, of the board array, right? So uh, hence the rendering is split into two parts. So we render this board first, and then this update allows to actually print uh, to print this uh, tetramina onto to render it onto the, the screen, basically, right? What else? Um, this part, uh, remove block, uh, is responsible for removing those blocks that you kind of snap them off and then the rest of, uh, of pieces just drops down. So one of the essential uh, things in regards to the gameplay to, to the gameplay itself. The user control is quite pretty trivial, so on arrow keys we do either moving this like, like uh, down to force its, to force the determiner dropping down. Uh, the up arrow key uh, forces the rotation and here we have the left and right. So hopefully uh, like the overall general structure is clear and to make it sort of a non-blocking mode, we I'm using the set timeout to call the game loop itself kind of in the background. So we're not heading during playing the game. So this is pretty much all about the entire game. So it's quite pretty simple. I have some constants to to represent the colors, the width and the height of, of the Tetris board. That's pretty much all about it. So starting from the next video, we'll go and implement this uh, routine step by step. And I would be providing extended commentaries on what in particular every line of code is doing and how exactly the entire game is working. So I hope you see uh, within this exciting series. So until that time and take care.